is the Glass Cannon Network. What's up, you guys? It's Sydney and Kate here. Welcome to our channel. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about really important stuff. Like and subscribe. Uh, comment below um, what. Hit the think? notification button. Yeah, for. Okay, I can't. I can't. <laughs> uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. We're doing a Twitch takeover. That's right. We have taken over the fishbowl booth at Gen Con 2023. Uh, everybody has been having a blast. We've been playing a ton of fun games. But now, we're not playing a game. Not on this stream. We're not playing games. It's a takeover, and there's no take backs. This yeah. is our booth now. <laughs> and we're not, no one's allowed to come in this here. We've company. locked all the doors. Yeah. Joe is panicking outside. He's banging yeah. on the glass. He's like, let me in. Let we're me like, in. No. You gave it to us. No takes these backsies. Um, but I guess more, more seriously, yeah. we did have kind of like a theme for today, basically, that like... Um, we have full-time jobs and also do this, and that's yeah. kind of like an interesting thing that people always ask um, us about in live shows. I don't know about you, but I get asked that question. Well, con a yeah, ton. constantly. They say, yeah. are you full-time with GCP? And I'm like, K pretty much, kind of. I mean, right. yeah, like we, we work a lot. We constantly are recording. We're now in the studio in person, um, which is, you know, everybody's like commuting in. So it is, it is a job, but then Kate and I also have full-time jobs in completely different careers than tabletop gaming. Uh, and we have to balance it. And we get asked about that a lot because a lot of people have full-time jobs and then they also play games. But it's different <laughs> for us because as a job, it fe I feel pulled in two directions a lot of the time. I don't know if you feel that. Pulled in two directions with GCP and then with my job. They're both very creative for me. Okay. Um, so I feel I put a lot of creative energy into GCP. And if, for those who don't know, I'm also a production designer for film and TV, which takes a lot of creative energy, too. So sometimes I do feel spread thin. Um, but it's also one of those things where, like, I can't complain. Like, I get to do two really amazing jobs. Um, and I feel really lucky that I get to do both. So it's, uh, it's a double-edged double sword. But... Every day I just like remind myself that I love what I do, which is true. Uh, and then I kind of like forget about all the the sort of negative stuff that comes with the stress that comes with it. But what about you? Because you're I feel like your job is so different. Yeah. So like, I mean, I feel the same depletion, but in a different way, because like not that my job isn't creative. For those who don't know, I'm a full time software engineer. I work for a remote company and that's how I'm able to like do things like going on tour. Um, and performing at night. I just work from like the hotel or wherever has internet during the day, which is like super fun and definitely not tiring. <laughs> you know what you need? You need one of those like neck laptop stands what? that like, you know what I'm talking about? No. Those who watch Nathan for you uh, know what I'm talking about. It's like a, like a halter uh, table and you put your laptop on it. Ugh. And it's like, you like type like this and imagine you could code on the go. Like this? Okay, like a I, little listen, lower. I already almost have like carpal tunnel. I couldn't imagine typing like this. Like a small dinosaur. I'm typing like normal, like <laughs> sitting up straight and it's already getting messed up. But like, yeah, I not that my job isn't creative in that like it's very logical the way that I'm trying to problem solve, but you're also using some creativity like with what you're trying to do, but like a different side of it. So I don't feel like the creative depletion. It's more just like the mental energy depletion. Yeah, yeah. Where like at the end of my work day, I want to just like switch off and maybe do some like reading in a rule book or like going over my character sheet or just like going over whatever. And I just don't have like the mental capacity to yeah. all the time. So that's I interesting. I will say like it is funny. The things that you do to unwind, like I don't know. I love video games. I stream on Twitch. And that certainly it sometimes is like an unwind activity. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it is like, abs depending on the game I play, if I'm playing a horror game, it is not. But I find that coming from my job, I do love to like read the rule book <laughs> or, like, or like work on a character just for fun. Like, you know, look at my character, 
think about the next level up. Uh, sometimes I make new characters just just in case, but also like just for fun. And I find that that is like a relaxing activity that I do enjoy doing, um, which I think has changed over. I don't think I would have said that like two years ago, but now right. it's become so ingrained in my life, uh, being on more shows with with Glass Cannon and stuff, but and playing more with friends too. Running games, I think I'm, I lean more into that. But do you do you think? in an ideal world that you would become like a full-time TTRPG player? Oh yeah. I don't want like, listen, just, <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm, I'm hey, gonna, guys, I'm gonna stop. Sh- sh- shut the fuck up. I'm going to stop. Listen, the other Kate on my shoulder because I still am gainfully employed. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I would like to be. They're not watching, but, like, but over, just in case, just in case anyone from just my job case. is watching. Listen, I love my job. I appreciate my job. Yeah. I want to do good, whatever. I have my own work ethic. But, like, at the end of the day, yeah, if it wasn't for capitalism, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would just be doing this. I would love to just only do this, um, but I can't because money yeah. and health insurance and stuff like that. But I'm hoping to, like, eventually transition, like, doing more shows. I've yeah. been, we're doing Gatewalkers. We're on tour. It's, like, slowly adding on more and more and more. And then eventually I hope to just kind of phase out real-life job and yeah. just do this. Which, that would be cool. Which is not to say, like our jobs at GCP like there's a lot that we do it's not like we don't just show up to play like there's a lot of I mean that's what I do <laughs> okay uh, sometimes I do sometimes I show up and I'm like it's been a busy day but no I mean there, there's a lot we do so for me a lot of people have said at live shows you know I'm so happy that you're playing on more shows and I am too I'm, I'm so grateful I feel so lucky I've also get to, I've gotten to experience games that I've never played before learn new games which is I love that aspect of the job um, but it is more work you know so I feel the same way like I would love to be able to do this full time say to people like oh yeah I play I play tabletop games I'm on a I'm on a podcast which I say but as a full time job that is definitely like a dream a goal um, and I feel like I'm getting there. I have been, I've been playing way more games. I feel really, really happy to be doing that. Um, but we'll see about the future. I don't know. So, like, I said how kind of I balance my full-time job with doing this. But, like, how do you balance yours? It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard. I, um, I work on a TV show, on a few TV shows on uh, network television, uh, also gainfully employed. I'm happy that I am employed. I make my money. I get to pay my rent. Disclaimer. And I, disclaimer. I live my life. If you're watching, uh, but I work on these true crime TV shows. They're cool. They're well, they're cool. They're like murder uh, content. Cool. <laughs> Morning. If you look them up. Um, but it's hard. I work on set. Um, basically two or three weeks. I'm, I'm like prepping for a week or two weeks and then I'm on set. And when I'm on set, it is for people who work in the industry, I don't do anything else. And people know this. I, it's like a 16 hour day and I, I wake up, I go to work and then I come home and immediately go to bed because I have to do it again the next day. So unfortunately, I have almost like blackout weeks with Glass Cannon and I put it in the calendar where I'm like, I won't be answering email. Like I just can't do this this week. And luckily, it's worked out schedule-wise. Sometimes it's tough. I, I get stressed about trying to go on tour and stuff. Um, but my season ends soon, and I am I may not re-sign my contract with them. I may try to figure out a better work-life balance because I've also learned, you know, in these past few years, post uh, lockdown pandemic life, I've learned that like mental health is extremely important, and like doing things for yourself is extremely important, and jobs and money are also important but it doesn't it's not like the same there's like a couple venn diagrams happening so we shall see about the future but glass cannon makes me so happy and playing games and like going to cons being at gen con this is our first gen con yeah which we should touch on too because it's a i don't know i i'm like overwhelmed yes by how (laughs) cool this is how nice everybody is um i feel so like I don't know. I feel like small fish, huge pond. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I love tabletop games. I love board games. And I come here, I'm like, fuck, I don't know anything. I don't know right? shit about shit. I mean, like, I knew this was going to be, like, the Disneyland of yes. this type of thing. That is exactly but even, what it is. It doesn't really, like, prepare you for the experience. And, like, just right before we got on to do this, we were walking around trying to specifically find, like, the Free League Alien booth. 
And of course we didn't find it because it's massive in here. And we found the map and it's just like on the complete opposite end of where we were and there was no way we could get there in time. The map for is now. also comically large. Yes. Like you walk up and you're like, it's oh like, no, it's just like dots. It looks like constellations. Yeah. yeah, it's bigger than me. It's wider. It must be like six feet long. Um, but how, how have you been liking Gen Con? I mean, I feel like I haven't even barely like experienced it. I mean, I've walked around the floor, which is a thing in itself. There's just like everyone is here. But like, I really want to do like a play test of a game. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. we walked yesterday to go to the um, to go find food at the food trucks, maybe we walked down a hall. It was just a, a hall of pinball machines. Yes. I had no idea. Pinball I love Alley. Pinball, and there was like trophies out. They're having like a competition. So like. I didn't even know that was a thing. I'm going to do that. We got to do that later. Maybe if yeah. I have time. Yeah. But like, yeah, that's kind of how I feel. Like I just showed up and I'm like, ah, and that's it. <laughs> I feel I feel like I'm learning a lot too. I keep asking people for advice about Gen Con. Trying to find food was a huge one. We yeah. quickly learned our lesson about that. Uh, it, the lesson is good luck is kind of what everybody has told us. Uh, I also learned... Aside from, I knew there was like the, the, the floor, the main floor. I knew there was like artist alley type mm -hmm. stuff. And then of course areas where you play games and contest play. But I also found out that they have uh, like, I think they call it spa something, but it's like extra curricular sort of non, not exactly table type uh, workshops. And they have like sword fighting. They have martial arts classes. They have... Tai Chi and there was like a barbarian workout to like bring out your inner barbarian. What? I know and I didn't know about this before coming to Gen Con. I don't even know if I would have time to do them with all the shows like we're doing. someone just walked by our booth and he's got, like, got like an, an animatronic, animatronic anim bird on his shoulder. <sighs> Like, it's so hard being just, <laughs> it's so hard being in this booth because I've seen so many cool people in costume. I've seen so many dogs and yeah. I'm just like I just want to go like reach out and touch them and say hi but we can't cuz we're in a bubble. That's the thing. Like if I have one complaint about Gen Con is that it's really hard to navigate their website for like the special events and to special find that stuff. Specialty things that they have. Yeah. Like one of our friends is doing a show and she posted about it on like Twitter and Instagram. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go find it and see if I need to buy a ticket. And I could not for the life of me use the site see, to Kate, figure out how to find the show. This is where your superpower comes in. Your coding power. You need to hack in, <laughs> fix their site for them, change a bunch of shit and change their passwords. I don't know how coding works. Make a back door, <laughs> get in there, uh, and then get right back out and they'll never know. That's exactly how it works. I assume. Yeah, you should, we should switch jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I played, the embarrassing thing is in Delta Green uh, and Get in the Trunk. Oh yeah. Season two, uh, season two, yeah, I think. I played a hacker and I had to Google I Googled a bunch of words. I just Googled like fishing. Okay, I know I what that is. I think this is before we knew each other. Pain, Otherwise, no. I would have been like, just ask me. I would have reached out <laughs> to you. I didn't do Magdalena. That was her name. I didn't do her justice. But uh, now that I now that I have so much information, we just turned to Kate. We Every time, Joe, Troy, somebody, they just go, and the this thing is, is a computer thing. Kate, comment on this. Whenever you guys do that, my brain immediately like flushes itself. And I like don't know anything. This happened yesterday in the booth. They're like, say computer words and I was like electrons you said electrons <laughs> <laughs> well that's technically like how they like the like it's all electricity like it's all rocks talking to each other if like someone, if you get down to it if we were playing a uh, word association like a, a <laughs> game show and someone said computers and I said electrons I don't think that one would be on the board just gotta well, say it's just because they're not you know that in, they're, they're not real computer they're not real software engineers if you know you know anyway yeah, anyway I don't know uh, what else were we going to talk about? We had, oh, well, we had, the, we had our idea. We wanted to call the show, uh, It's Not a Phase Mom. Yeah. <laughs> so Troy messaged us. He's like, what are you guys going to talk about? What's the title of it? And I just like kind of brain dumped. I was like, it's not a phase, mom. Being like, whatever. Do you, you want to say your age? You had, to, uh, do you want me to say my age? Being 30s. 30s? 30 something. <laughs> Who like, was that a trick? <laughs> I don't know, but like like being thirty somethings that like grew up in like a, especially like girls yeah. grew up in an environment where we're just constantly corralled to like not be doing this and like when you're older like there's nothing this isn't going to serve you to like yeah. growing up and be like see look at me now I'm <laughs> still at, playing games look at me and now, like mom. just that arc yeah I guess of our lives so like 
I well, know. Did you did you play tabletops growing up, or what was your? No, I like didn't know what that was. I yeah. feel like when you're young like that, you need someone to expose you to it. Yeah, you need like the older brother, yeah. or older sister, because it's so complicated to jump into, and you also need a group of friends that are also into it. Like yeah. I was very much a solo just video game and computer game player. You? Solo? That's weird. I mean, I played the original Sims on yeah. a computer that was very large in my room. Yes. <laughs> That's true. We do, we both share an extreme affinity for the Sims, which maybe explains why uh, I love role-playing in tabletop yeah. RPGs. I mean, the Sims is really just like a really complicated way of playing with dolls. Yeah. So. Yeah. Electronic dolls. Electron yeah. dolls, if you will. They're in a computer. But I didn't do like my first like tabletop role playing thing until um, we lived in the city and my husband and I were just like, we want to scratch this itch. We've been starting listening to podcasts, but we didn't have friends that were like into it that we could just corral all at the same time. Yep. So we did like one of those things where you go to your local game store and someone there is paid to run you through like yes. an encounter. And we were, it was me and him and three other people from the neighborhood. What'd you play? We played d and I played like... They said the session zero that we came into play, like that's where you make your characters. So M Michael and I came in with nothing, but like everyone else came in with their characters. So we oh. kind of had to make our characters around like what wasn't being supported. So I made a, a drow uh, rogue. That's uh, fun. And that was fun. Was yeah. it fifth edition? I don't know. It was it so long ago and like I barely was. remember. I feel like it probably was. Maybe. But um, yeah. How I've, about you? Similar. Like, thank God for podcasts. <laughs> I, I found out about tabletop gaming in a way where I wanted to play it through podcasts. I listened to a bunch of actual plays and I just was like, that is so much fun. It's so much fucking fun. And I want to have that fun. But I didn't have friends who played. And growing up, it, I wasn't really exposed to it. The closest thing I got to like extreme nerdum when I was growing up was video games. I was super into video games. Um, I played like all of the Kingdom Hearts series. Like I was a big, that one I feel like is the nerdiest, but I played Call of Duty with my dad and like Civilization also with my dad. <laughs> we like took turns. So that was really nerdy. And I remember in middle school, somebody on my bus like knew I played Kingdom Hearts and they were like, you should really join the anime club at school. And I was like, Fuck no! I cannot join the anime. Social like, suicide. I wanted to. Something. I want. It wasn't even like I was like that's lame. I wanted to so bad, but I was like I can't. I don't have the the mental strength to join anime club and then put up with people making fun of me. Yeah. So I held myself back. I, I'm sure if I had, I swear, if I had joined anime club, I would have been playing D and D. You know, like a few months later, it would have just been that like transition. But it wasn't until I was out of college. And I, I've told this story before, maybe some haven't heard it. I was out of college, I was living in Salem, Massachusetts. I wanted to play D&D &D so bad, and I didn't have any friends who play. I like couldn't get a group together. And I was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to a game cafe. There's one in town. I'm just gonna go. I know they have a game night with D&D. &D. I'm just gonna show up. So I showed up completely alone on like a Sunday night. And I walked in so, I was shaking. I was like so nervous. Aww. I was like, hi, I think um, there's a D&D &D game t um, happening maybe here. I don't know. I would like to play if it's, uh, if, if it's busy, no, no worries. <laughs> and uh, the woman was like, oh, there's like a group back there. And I went over, a bunch of dudes, obviously. And I was like, uh, hi, are you guys playing D&D? &D? I'd love to play. And they were like, no, we're not playing D&D. &D. We're playing Shadowrun, which I'd never heard of. And uh, they were like, you are more than welcome to play. And they were Aww. so nice. I was like, oh, I've. I don't know what that is. Like, I don't want to ruin your game. Like, I, I don't know how to play. They were so nice. And they welcomed me in, taught me how to play, helped me make a character, like, on the spot. I played with them for months. Like, I, I went, like, Sunday. And you had to pay. Like, you had to pay. Yeah. And you had to buy, like, a coffee. And I played Shadowrun with them. And it was, like, a diplomatic espionage game. Like, it's totally not what I was expecting coming from D&D &D and wanting to play that. But, man, it, like cracked my brain open yeah and then from that point on I was just like fully in it I found a D&D &D group to play with that was my friends we started playing a campaign I played with them until I moved back to New York I started doing video game content on YouTube with like the leaderboard and then from there I just jumped into glass can like it all just like kind of happened like once I started playing it just kept going it was like a big uh momentum ball just like rolling down a hill but now yeah now I'm like obviously sitting in this booth at Gen Con, like, so into it. I'm so into it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely, like, that first game you play, and then, like, 
it kind of opens up this box of like, wait, how deep does this box go? Yeah. And there's games like Delta Green where I can pretty much play in like an X Files world. Yes. And but just uh, Call of Cthulhu and yeah. stuff like that. And yeah, it it just opens up Pandora's box. Is that what that is? Yeah. But it could be. one thing that I remember growing up and what kind of like held me back was you know those teen magazines and it's like take this quiz to see if you're like cool or whatever the fuck it was. And one of the questions was like how do you greet someone on instant messenger? And it was like, Hey, like hiya with like whatever smiley faces and then like two other examples. And I chose like the hiya or whatever, just like the extra one where you have those typed out emojis. Yeah. And the response to that one was, um, you're on the computer too much. You need to go outside. <laughs> and I was like, Oh God, I'm never gonna be cool. This is why you don't read Tiger and Beat magazine. Anyway, anyway, whoever wrote that way back then held me back. And if you learn anything from uh, this takeover that we're gonna have to give back, yeah, um, they just don't actually, listen to your parents and do whatever you want. Yeah, and just not, tell them, Kate and Sid. It's not said. a phase, Mom. All right, so before we go, let's quickly give away um, some huge secrets of the glass cannon because nobody can stop mm. us. Mm-hmm. So what what is something that you think people would be interested in knowing uh, behind the, a little peek behind the scenes, a peek behind the curtain? Um, usually before every live show, we have like a cast dinner. Yeah. Um, oh, God. And it always ends in us like laughing tears. That is a great <laughs> one, actually. We have so much Somehow. fun together on tour. Yeah. And every night before a show, we do a cast dinner and... Uh, I don't know. It's our energy. It's just yeah, our energy. We're just like, like silly. We just end up like telling the most ridiculous stories. Like we really get to know each other too. Like we're just talking about our lives and we end up laughing. So it's embarrassing in it's, a restaurant. It hurts. Like we're like, crying. <laughs> our stomachs hurt. That's a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. A man. What All about right. you? Oh God. I don't Give know if I can top that. Big juicy secret. I don't think there's any big, well behind the scenes, we always have a push up competition <laughs> and everyone would be, I think, fascinated to know that Kate wins every time. Mm-hmm. And we did a wall sit competition last night and Kate won. No, and I, and Matthew wins when we do push-ups. But Matthew isn't here but on this Matthew tour, so Kate, so Kate won. So, um, I won. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We will be shutting down the stream. It's going dark for a little bit because there is a modern Call of Cthulhu game that <laughs> I'm on you at Gen run. Con. Kate and I have to run over. But we'll be back at 3 uh, Eastern time on the stream for Escape from New York. So, Take a pause, drink some water. If you're at Gen Con, drink water. Drink water. Uh, And then tune back in at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll see you then. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for letting us take over. Let us do it again. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, Subscribe, notifications, like, comment. Bye. See you next time.